The kidneys are the guardians of the internal environment and the major component of the urinary system. Nephrogenesis or kidney development, which is quite complex, begins to occur during the fourth week of fetal development and by the ninth week produces the metanephros, which remains as the permanent adult kidney. The kidneys do the major work of the urinary system and they are literally a powerhouse of activity, actually having a higher blood flow than the brain, liver or even the heart. In the following presentation we will look at the path of renal blood flow through a healthy set of kidneys and in a condition known as multicystic dysplastic kidney disease. The kidneys remove waste from the blood into urine and regulate blood volume, pressure, pH, osmolarity, glucose levels and ionic composition. They also produce hormones, the major ones being calcitriol, the active form of vitamin D, erythropoietin which stimulates red blood cell production, and the enzyme renin, important in sodium and blood pressure control. The kidneys are a major functional unit of the circulatory system and abundantly supplied with blood vessels as they receive 20 to 25 percent, about 1.2 liters of all the blood in the body via the renal arteries every minute. Oxygenated unfiltered blood flows into the kidneys through the renal artery that arises from the aorta and divides into several segmental arteries that enter the renal hilum. Each segmental artery then branches into interlobar arteries that pass through the renal columns between the renal lobes, entering the functional portion of the kidney, collectively known as the parenchyma, which constitutes the renal cortex and renal pyramids of the renal medulla. They then follow the outer curvature of the renal pyramids, where they are known as the arcuate arteries. Dividing further, they produce a series of cortical radiate arteries, also known as interlobular arteries, that radiate outwards entering the renal cortex, giving off branches called afferent arterioles. One afferent arteriole enters into each nephron, which is the functional unit of the kidneys, and divides into a ball-shaped capillary network called the glomerulus, a condensed mass of capillaries which allows substances to escape via filtration. We'll briefly look at the functional units of the kidneys, the nephron, before continuing on. Each nephron is a microscopic filter for blood and its function is to clean the blood of unwanted substances. There are around 1.5 million nephrons in each kidney and the majority, about 85%, are known as cortical nephrons as they are located in the renal cortex and the remainder are known as juxtamedullary nephrons located in the renal medulla. The nephron is composed of the renal corpuscle containing the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule that surrounds the glomerular capillaries and a renal tubule. Blood is filtered in the capsule and the filtered fluid passes into the renal tubules which receive and process it. When looking at kidney function and blood flow in a person with multicystic dysplastic kidney disease, the kidney's tubules fail to branch out completely and the urine that would normally flow through the small tubules has nowhere to go. It collects inside the affected kidney and forms cysts. The affected kidney will have little or no function, the latter being the best outcome as the remaining healthy kidney can take over the full function of both kidneys. The single functioning kidney usually presents with compensating renal hypertrophy or an increase in size, on average 75% larger than a normal kidney which occurs in response to increased functional demands. The majority of the growth takes place in the renal cortex where most metabolic activity occurs. As a result of its size and weight, the kidney may be more vulnerable to injury. However, most individuals with solitary kidney function live a normal, healthy life. When looking at deoxygenated blood flowing out of the kidney, veins trace the pathway of the renal blood supply, but in reverse. An efferent arteriole carries blood out of the glomerulus and flows into more capillaries known as the peritubular capillaries in cortical nephrons and the vasa recta in juxtamedullary nephrons, which both surround tubular parts of the nephron. Blood leaving the peritubular capillaries where it is deoxygenated drains into the cortical radiate veins, which also receive blood from the vasa recta. It then flows sequentially into the arcuate veins, into lobar veins, there are no segmental veins, and finally the renal vein, which then empties into the inferior vena cava. Despite their relatively small size, 
The kidneys are multi-talented powerhouses of activity, not only receiving around 25% of all the blood in the body, but keeping the blood clean and chemically balanced. Thankfully, having two kidneys is not essential for life, and in fact, half of one kidney is sufficient to keep an individual alive. This amazing organ controls the environment of all cells of the body, an activity that is essential to life.